Welcome to the Opus Projector Tool Training. In this video, I want to give you a tour of our new release, the Opus Projector 2021.4. As you can see, we have a new splash screen. As you also can see, we have a new device. The Opus B4 is in our set of devices from this version. This is the new release. It looks similar to the one before, but there are quite a few changes and improvements. Probably the most important one is the tip of the day. So each time you open the projector, you will see a random tip from us for you. Some of them might be very trivial for you and not news at all, but I'm sure at some point you will see something and go, ah, didn't know that. Hopefully. If not, then please share your knowledge with us and we will improve the tip of the day for the other customers. Okay, so what's new? I have prepared some projects here. We have a new sample project, a trade show demo project, which is basically ready to use. It is branded with TopCon, so you might want to make a few changes, but it is ready to use for a trade show in the sense that as you can see, the needles are moving, so it's ready to go. You don't need to make any, any changes, really. It is a sample project. You can create it for every device type, and dynamically, it will show the correct hardware information right here. So this will not be the same if I build it for an A3 or an A8. Then it will show the technical data of the according device. Here's the programming info. Here we have put a dynamic gauge so people on the trade show can see how nicely objects can be changed dynamically at runtime. There's a lot to play around with. There's a camera page and I cannot show that on the on the simulation. There is a short video here. Of course, you can exchange that with one of your own. Probably one of the most asked features is that we have a search now. So if you have large projects, many variables, whatever, sometimes you want to search for things. And it's definitely a feature that is very welcome in the support. So I have a welcome sample here quite a big project. Let me just very quickly show you. So I press Control F to open the search. I can also open it from the menu and I will just search for test and you can see it's quite fast and it shows all the results where the word test is used in whatever way. If you double click, it will it will open the, the object in question. There are a lot more features and things to know, but I will make a separate video about that. So check that out. The next thing is we have now a project versioning system. So I don't know if you are familiar with software versioning. It did happen, sadly, with some customers that projects can get corrupted during a safe process or if the computer is shut down unexpectedly and the projector could not complete the save of a project. And sometimes you might want to go back to a state from a couple of days ago or a week ago because things have not worked out or you want to check something. And this is possible now. In this project, I had created just three string fields, of course, nothing big, but I have saved in between. And if I open this revision browser, you can see that I have access to the different stages of the project. This is the state when the project was created. It was just an, an empty project. This was when I added the first string field. It even shows the changes in our project file. Second string field, third string field, and I renamed the project to versioning. And I can access any of these revisions. You need to be careful, especially when opening older revisions, but this will also be covered in a separate video. What else? I don't know if you have spotted it, but I have removed the satellite window in the lower left because I didn't really use it. And there is now an undo redo pane. And if I do some changes here, you will see that this fills up quite quickly. Now, I didn't want to delete the whole frame. I just wanted to delete that one string field. So I will just go back. So this works basically as undo redo in any other program. You can press Control Z and it will undo all the changes, Control Y, and it will redo them. You can use the mouse as well. There will also be, it will be a combined video of the search and undo redo. So check that out for some more details of what you can do and what you need to take care about. We also have two new object themes. The themes are stunning dark and stunning bright. I think you can guess which one is which. So it's uh, these are high contrast themes for day-night use. We have buttons that have a glowing indicator of when being pressed. 
So this here is the press state. String fields and numerics have this nice surrounding. The colors on all the objects are unified, so it all looks like a theme. We have a new background for gauge and meter. And there's also a new font that we introduced for the dashboard project, which fits very nicely with these themes. So feel free to use them. They are available on every project now. Last but not least, we have a couple of new JavaScript commands. First one is has been asked for, for years. It's a very powerful one, a very dangerous one. So please read the manual and please be very careful. The command speaks for itself, run system command. So with this command, you can execute a Linux command like you would on the serial console. So for example, on an A3, you could execute the command set boot logo, use an image file on the file system or on a USB stick, and it will do that. And it will do everything. We are not filtering anything. We are not limiting anything. You have full power, full control, but that also means you have full responsibility. So if you decide to type in that you want to delete the whole file system, Well, I think this will be enough. No problem. It will do that, but the P client will basically kill itself because it will be deleted and you have to install everything again. You most probably will not be able to destroy the device beyond being able to be repaired by just reinstalling P client and OS. There is no explosion command, but of course you really should use it with caution. I'm sure you will have a lot of ideas how to use it. I will be curious to see what you will be able to do with it, but be careful. Next has also been asked from customers. You will be able now to open a PDF file from a JavaScript, not only from button actions, and you can get the event that triggered the execution of a JavaScript. So you might already know this function, get caller ID, which basically means you get the ID of the object or the can message that triggered the execution of a script. But sometimes, depending on what you want to do, that might not be enough. So with this function, you can also get the event that triggered it. So let's say you have the same script on press and on release of a button, then this one will tell you which button it was, and this one will tell you if it was executed with press or release. So that's the news. There are many more small improvements too much to show in one video. So check out the manual. A lot of bug fixes, of course. It's a very great, very stable version. We're looking forward to sharing it with you. Please continue to give your feedback right here. Send us the crash reports and please, please, please put a name and an email. We have gotten a few strange crash reports where we would have liked to ask the customer some questions. What exactly happened? Because these reports cannot tell us everything at all times. So please put an email so we can get back to you. And if you have any feedback, positive or negative, feel free to report it to us. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.